What do you say we make some crock pot meals for a family of six? I'm excited. I hope you're excited. I feel like in this day and age of air fryers and instant pots and Nespresso machines and frothings and, and all these other things, we forget, we forget about the humble crock pot. Mine is not fancy, even a little bit. I paid $19.95 for it at Walmart. I've had it for a while. It has no fancy buttons. It doesn't have a timer. It doesn't have a claspy lid. Works just fine. And for some items, I feel like it is truly superior than basically anything else. So if you have a crock pot hanging around, well, it's time to pull it out, dust it off, and write down these recipes that you are gonna see today because you're gonna to wanna to try them and you want your crock pot to be ready. So if you love crock pots and cooking videos, hook me up with a thumbs up to help out the channel. I truly appreciate it and let's get cooking. Also, if you want a crock pot for super cheap, hit up your local thrift store and look for the really old ones from like the 70s that are kind of that olive green color or that burnt orange color. They well, just make sure there's no cracks. Tonight for dinner, we are going to make this, uh, I've heard it called a lot of different things, uh, Mississippi pot roast or butter beef or crock pot Italian beef, or I don't know. This is kind of how I put it together, although there are a ton of recipes online. So I have one chuck roast, it's a couple of pounds, maybe three, three pounds or so. One jar of pepperoncinis. These are quite spicy. I got these from Thrive Market. I'm actually gonna dump this whole thing and the juice because when I did it that way the first time, my family liked it better than the rings and not very much liquid. We're gonna put in about a half a stick of butter, one package of ranch uh, dressing or dry ranch, whatever. And I also have this powdered ranch seasoning. I'm gonna put this in as well. And some Italian seasoning, uh, maybe a tablespoon of this. We're just gonna sprinkle everything on top and we'll put it on high for a couple of hours. And then when it's time to serve it, you can do all kinds of things with it. I will show you that when we get to that point. There's the butter. Here come the pepperoncinis. If you don't like it spicy, I would use way less or way less liquid. Come on, baby. But last time, Dave loved that he could have the whole pepper with everything. Let's add some. Italian seasoning time. I'm, I am not gonna measure this. I'm just gonna eyeball it and it is with my left hand so there's no guarantees what's gonna happen here. Um, that looks like a healthy tablespoon and a half. Getting this one, <coughs> oh, I just pepper sprayed myself, oh my gosh. This one out of my spice cabinet. This one out of my spice cabinet. Whoop. Don't inhale that, it'll make you cough. Lid on, on high and we will see you in a couple of hours. Whoa, this has been cooking away for several hours, so it's time to shred all the beef and then stick it back in here with the juice. And there's a couple different ways you could eat this. You can put it on a sandwich, you can serve it with some vegetable sides, whatever you want to do. I don't remember if I said this before, but this is a chuck roast. It should shred apart just like this very, very easily. And if it's not, you need to cook it longer. It should just like fall apart like a butter. Once it's all shredded, you're gonna put it back in the juice. And then this is what you're gonna use to like make your sandwiches with or do what I did, which is put it over mashed potatoes, which was so amazing, oh my gosh. In my crock pot, I have a liner. This is the first time I've ever used one of these because I'm pretty basic, but today we're gonna be extra and see you know, how awesome the cleanup is. So we'll start with one pound of Italian sausage. I had pre-cooked this and stuck it in the freezer, which makes this really easy to do. Four cups of chicken broth. I'm just using the cubes because they're cheap, let's be honest, and I had them in my pantry. 128 can of tomatoes. I have these whole tomatoes, so we'll just use these. There we go. And then later on, I can use a potato masher to like squish those up. It asks for two cans of a 10 ounce of tomato soup. I don't have one of those. So we're gonna use this 14 and a half ounce, just one of it, and a touch of water should be fine. Okay, get the rest of that soup out of there. And this is it for now. So put the lid on, cook it on low six to eight hours or high three to four hours. And at the end, we will add our pasta and cheese. Here's the soup after a couple of hours and everything should be fully cooked. And I did mush up my tomatoes and it is time to add all of my uh, tortellinis and all of my cream cheeses. So I'm gonna add this whole container and this whole container. And we will cook on high for another 30 minutes 
until my tortellinis are totally cooked and then we're good to eat. Here is the completed soup. My cream cheese is not quite ah, uh, mixed in all the way, but that's about, that's about all of it, my friends. It smells amazing. Serve that alongside some salad and some crusty bread. I even have a whole video based on a no need homemade crusty bread that is so delicious and would go with this nicely. Recipe for this soup down below. This crock pot dish is called crock pot South African chicken. And I don't think it's native to South Africa at all. I don't know why that's the title. How about you guys help me out and hook me up with a new title idea for this dish once you see what it is. So let me know down in the comments, what should we change this name to be? Because I don't think South African crock pot chicken is a good name. So in here, I have about two and a half pounds of chicken, depending on the size of your chicken breast. That could be a couple or not very many. And we're gonna add a whole bunch of stuff. So I have one whole can of drained corn, one four ounce can of diced green chilies, one diced onion and three cloves of garlic, one to two diced green bell peppers. You only need 14 ounces of crushed or diced tomatoes and I only had this 28 ounce can. So we're gonna do half of this, not all of it. And I'll save the rest for later. Four ounces of tomato paste. This is six, so we will not use all of this. About like that. Now I do need to add one can of black beans, but as it turns out, I don't have any that are cooked. So while this starts, I'm gonna run this through my instant pot and add it later. But if you're more prepared than me, you'll just add one can of drained black beans. One tablespoon of ground cumin. I'm gonna eyeball that because why not? That's about a tablespoon. A half a tablespoon of chili powder. That looks close-ish. One teaspoon of salt, that's about that much. And about one tablespoon of pepper. I'm sorry, teaspoon, teaspoon of pepper, which is about that much. I'm just gonna move this around a little bit. Remember, we are gonna add our black beans later but we will top this with one other thing. A half a pound of shredded pepper jack cheese. Put that all over the top like this. And the lid goes on. We're gonna cook this on low for about six hours and then come back and shred the chicken. It is time to dig out your chicken breasts and shred them. And as you can see, this is just kind of shredding to pieces right in here in the crock pot. So honestly, I don't even have to dirty another dish to do this. I have heard that a whisk does a really good job of this. Let's try it out. I love some whiskey business in the crock pot. You know what I'm saying? Now that your chicken is shredded and everything is mixed together, you are ready to put it on a plate and get eating. And what manner of vehicle is the best one to get this delicious concoction into your mouth? The possibilities are endless. You can put it on top of a salad. It can be a rice bowl. You can put it on top of chips and create nacho nachos out of this. Or you can do my favorite one, which is use it as a filling for burritos, which is what we are going to do tonight. And remember, everything is in here. The cheese is in here, all of the spices, all of the seasonings. Of course, you can add extra cheese if you would like to do that. And remember, I desperately need another name for this dish. So hook me up with your suggestions below and uh, we're gonna eat right now. What do you say we make some crock pot mac and cheese today? For some reason, I always have a ton of elbow pasta in my house. I don't know why. Why is this the one that I always have so much of? I need more recipes that use elbow pasta. But my kids love mac and cheese. I don't buy it really anymore. I haven't, I used to buy the boxed mac and cheese, you know, the blue box, by the case and I haven't bought it in years. So this is quite a treat to have a homemade mac and cheese, but it can be labor intensive on the stove. So this time, today, we're gonna dump it all in there and there's gonna be no work and then we're gonna be done. Who's excited? You, are you? If you are, give this video a thumbs up. All right, let's get going. 
I am starting with one pound of rinsed elbow macaroni. I sprayed the interior of the crock pot and let's add some milk to this. I have two and a half cups of milk. Whole milk is best. You can probably use 2% or half and half or some combination thereof. 12 ounces of evaporated milk, 12 ounces of extra sharp cheddar cheese, four ounces of American cheese, or I guess Velveeta will work or sliced, you know, craft singles kind of stuff. That stuff melts really nicely. One teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of black pepper, half a teaspoon of ground mustard. I haven't used that, so I'm gonna use this actual mustard. Works just fine. A little sprinkle of garlic powder, just based on your family's preference. A little bit of cayenne, just a sprinkle. We're gonna mix this together. We want the macaroni to be mostly submerged the best that we can. And I'll top it with the rest of the butter now. You weren't under any illusions that mac and cheese is good for you, right? <laughs> Low heat for one hour, I'll see you then. Here's the completed mac and cheese. It looks pretty good. You can kind of hear it sizzling still. So I made a couple of errors here. Let me tell you about it. So first of all, my crock pot temperature varies a little bit and I followed the instructions and left it on low for an hour and it didn't do anything. So I turned it on high, which definitely cooked it and also curdled my milk a little bit. That's why you don't want to put it on high. You don't want to curdle your milk. However, if you want to start it on high to get it hot and then take it down to low, I think that would be a good option. So let's give it a little taste right now. It is cheesy and delicious. Salt levels are perfect. And honestly, this little like brown crunch on the side, I really like that. I like the crunchy bits. So I have no issues with that at all. That is going to wrap me up for today's crock pot meals. I hope you try a couple of them. Let me know down below which ones you are excited about and perhaps which crock pot meal recipes you want me to try next. Me and the crock pot, we're having a, a little bit of a love affair right now and I'm really enjoying using this appliance I've had in my kitchen forever. Thanks for hanging out with me today and I'll see you in the next video. If I stay here for a long time, does it get awkward? <laughs>